gives me like there's something that has made it stick. Yeah, okay. Hi guys. I'm like, how's <laughs> going? It's going okay. We were just discussing the structural validity of the snow fort. <laughs> I'm trying. To... I don't think anyone's convinced that this is safe. This I'm sitting is... on my foot. I feel really, I feel really confident here. It's February the fourth, two thousand eleven. <laughs> this is five oh eight. A show about Worcester today on the show. Brendan Melican. Good morning. Holmes Wilson. Hi, Holmes. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. And today on the show, we're going to talk about Worcester for a few minutes here. Before we pop out and start throwing snowballs at cars. There you go. Uh, today, we're in a snow fort because it's been snowing a lot in Massachusetts. Um, apparently, uh, this apparently according to the paper, like a lot of people's roofs are collapsing from snow. This roof may collapse at any moment. This roof, this roof would only exist because of snow, though. Mm, that's true. So we have to be, we have to think about that. Um, what are we gonna do? Is there any snow stuff to talk about? Um, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. What? Let me ask you guys a question, because you guys are with lifelong Worcesterites, right? Yeah. What, so I've only lived here for like oh, too long now, like nine years now. It feels like every winter, practically, the city is kind of like, oh wow, it's snowing. Like we don't really know how to deal with this. Area legend has it that like nobody even paid attention to snow until the blizzard of '78, and it was somewhere around the blizzard of '78 that like that's when all the panicking about you know uh, milk, eggs, and uh, bread you know started. Like every time it snows, everyone has to run out and get the materials <laughs> necessary to make French toast, and you know people get really really concerned about snow. I, I don't think anyone actually paid attention until after that though. So you, so you, so are you saying that that the problem that the problem is people over preparing for snow? Yeah. That that caused what's causing all the snow problems? Yes. Just stay in your snow fort and enjoy it. <laughs> do, do you buy them? Yeah, I just don't go out. I mean, I don't... My my drive... My sister has our car. My driveway is is snowed in deeply, and it's just staying that way. There's a little path that gets you to the door. Um, but I think... I don't know. I think during the bubble years, the city was really on the ball in terms of plowing. I was really impressed a bunch of times when my tiny dirt road got plowed, like, mm -hmm. three times over the course of one snowstorm. And now I think they probably just don't have as much money. Yeah, it's probably something like that. Some sections of the city are crazy too. I was down in uh, Maine South yesterday on my way to Trippies to get some pants hemmed, uh -huh. and uh, like the Terrell Street, Hitchcock Road, those streets down there are just uh, amazing. Like they're barely uh, there's barely enough room for one car to make it up or down, but you still have two way traffic. Um, there are cars that haven't been you know uncovered from. There's two or cars three with like storms. several feet of snow all over the car. Yeah, so I mean, there's no chance at all of like getting the the streets to full width at any any time during the winter. I, I don't understand how that's functioning at all. I want to ask you guys. I want to ask you guys about uh, sidewalk shoveling too, because this is this is the big issue: is sidewalk shoveling. And obviously, would you like to go uh, examine my sidewalk? Your sidewalk looks great. <laughs> I don't have a side. My house doesn't have a sidewalk. Well, there you I go. know that it's you walking by, passing judgment every day. So I have to take care of it. <laughs> I only I pass judgment on the fact that the, the, one of the problems with sidewalk shoveling is that you really need to get somewhere close to 100 percent. You need to at least be 90 percent of like all the sidewalks on the block. Yeah. Because otherwise, you if you, you just have gotta to walk the road. you just got to walk on the road. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. So it's kind of a tricky deal. I, I, I wanted to ask you a question. I understand though that people don't like to shovel their walk. People are out of town. Some people are old. Nicola Apostle is always pointing out that if you are infirm, I mean, like there are people who are old who can shovel their walk. I realize this too. There's people who are infirm or have no money. You can get some kind of assistance sidewalk assistance money or some kind of something. Yeah, there are a lot of schools and not-for-profits that offer that up. The, the city has a, a... Nicole has it linked to uh, on her site, and you can put it in the show notes, but the, the city keeps up a, a, an ongoing list of all these social service groups in the city, not-for-profits that'll send people out for free. People to, just waiting to show all your, your people sidewalk. People just waiting for that call, and I don't know that it ever comes, but yeah. Well, I want to talk about... I wonder the what the cost of the city doing it would be, because like one snowblower is equal to like how many like shovelers by hand? Probably like... 10 20 like yeah, one I mean, shoveler can probably do about 20 times as much work as, a, as an individual mm -hmm. and then i mean one snowblower and then you know yeah people have snowblowers and stuff but like it to just be like i mean if the city just had a fleet of snowblowers and you know just tax everybody like a little bit for for it and like mm -hmm. if you're below a certain income yeah. level you don't pay the tax or whatever the tax goes to the landlords it just goes into the rent like it wouldn't crack a tibia it would just like you just have a big you just have me on top of you all the time. <laughs> just have you on top of me. So we replaced the battery. Here's what I want to ask you guys, basically, about the snow the snow thing. So, like, there's, it seems like the city should be able to get its act together, sidewalk-wise. Lots of ideas on how to do this. But briefly, 
the other thing that the city asks people to do besides shovel their walks is get their cars out of the street on a snowy day, mm-hmm. right? Like, if it's going to snow, what do you call it? The snow warning? The snow? Winter ban. Winter, winter snow ban. you got to move your cars off certain parts of the street. It's not even just snow. It's all the time. It's like in the winter, you all can winter. only park on one side of the street. Okay, right. there you go. There you go. Or, don't, don't they do sometimes when it's going to snow, though? Or is it the whole winter long? Sometimes they s- probably say, no, I, I think don't some know. some streets have, like, like this street uh, doesn't have, an all like, a constant ban. It's only when, um, certain, when it's snowing. Certain times. Okay. And you can get, like, a Twitter message or a text or something. And they an make a ton of money off of tickets in the first week of that, of that show. So here's what, I'm, <laughs> here's what I'm saying. People, they get those cars off the road, though, right? Like, right now, there's a, th- there's a whole mechanism where the city can fine you if you don't shovel your walk, and they'll ha- pay somebody to do it for you and whatever. doesn't happen. The, I mean, obviously, the city and the state don't shovel a ton of their own sidewalk. Property sidewalks on their own property. Why, how is it that we're able to have, we're able to tow cars but not shovel sidewalks? Pats. <laughs> pats. We need to get pats involved in the snow shoveling business. <laughs> we need to get somebody right up. I, I mean, I guess that's what, vicious it, crony capitalism. <laughs> is there any reason for this, Brendan Milligan? I have absolutely no idea. No that's idea. So, well, right. yeah. I mean, it's the penalty, right? I don't know if you've ever lived in like an apartment where there is the snow ban when they come around like ticketing and towing. Yeah. It's yeah. just like this barrage of horns. Like if you if your car's out there. It's like the police, the people from Pats, and the tow trucks, they all just hit their horns at once, and you've got like 10 minutes to come down and get your car out, and if you don't get down in that time frame, then your car gets towed and the is abandoned is up at the airport or garbage. something. Garbage. I mean, but, it should just be ticketing. The tickets are usually sufficient. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it takes more work to, you know, get a, a car yanked out of 20 feet of snow anyways with a, a wrecker. I mean, it would just, yeah. just the fines is probably enough. I'm not advocating towing. I'm just saying, I, I mean, I think that there's probably other ways to take care of it. I'm just wondering why is it that we've been able to solve one problem, at least in a vicious, punitive way. But you know what I think other. it comes down to, though? I think this is, like, uh, years like this where you have an incredible amount of snow mm-hmm. are one of the downsides of central planning, right? I mean, like, it's, it's easy to plan for your, your average winter, and, mm-hmm. you know, everything seems fine. But a lot of it ends up becoming just a, 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 a an aspect of sort of, like, laziness or what have you, mm-hmm. where neighbors or, or, you know, people don't take care of their own property and whatnot because they just assume somebody else is going to. But those assumptions start falling apart when you have an abnormal winter where there's more snow than even the city can keep up with. So, I mean, unless everybody is actually working together as, like, an actual community, then things just fall apart. That's a really good point. You need, like, you need to create systems that can scale and, and like, yeah, a city budget that depends on machinery that only the city has is less likely to scale. So that's a good argument for what you're talking about of, like, creating these, like, networks of, of people to sort of do snow blowing and stuff, like, and maybe get small checks from the city as compensation, but, like, pretty much take care of their zone. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's there's certain things that only neighbors are going to be able to take care of, and because they're the ones that put value into it. You know, it's like if, if I do a huge stretch of sidewalk here, it's not for my own use. I don't really walk that much, but I know that you are going to walk by, yes. and you're going to give me, you know, a headache if, if my sidewalks are, aren't taken care of. Uh, you know, so <laughs> the motivation is, is not like, punitive. It's it's really that <clears throat> and I want things to be comfortable for my neighbors and the people who are making use of the yeah. sidewalk that's in yeah. front of my house. Although when it comes down to it, like, if I need to get anywhere fast, I'm walking on the road. There's no way. Because, like, even even pretty well-shoveled sidewalks are always less clear than the road is, just because cars do an awesome job of clearing the road and, like, yeah. causing the snow to melt. And, yeah. like, the salt they put on it and everything, like, it's always just going to be better. And, and so, like, right now it was pretty much plowed on Highland Street the other day. Mm-hmm. But, like, I needed to get somewhere. I was walking the road. I think what <laughs> like, we need to rather do. Rather than walking in this much loose snow on the bottom of a more or less shovel. I think so, what we uh, need to convince Bob Largest to get like a big sl- like old school sleigh and show up the entire <laughs> city how it can be done right with horses and a and team sleighs. of reindeer. Yeah, no, just as horses, right? I mean, like we used to do that. The, you know, we didn't need to plow because there weren't cars; there were just sleighs and horses. And you know, as silly as it sounds to have horses and, and sleighs rolling around, like it actually kind of makes a lot of sense this time of year. And a lot less work for the city. We need to talk to the school department about this. Or if we were Germany, our city would have subways or tunnels. Because we would just like, you know, been like, we need we a subway. We would have realized at some point. the money on having a subway. Let's stop and buying the streets in, and build a tunnel. Yeah, there are cities in Germany the size of Fitchburg that have subways. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's accurate. How many people does Fitchburg have? I think it goes down to like, like 100,000 people. 10,000. Okay. I don't know. No, so Fitchburg's like half the size of Worcester, there are cities in Germany with subways. Here's what, so. here's what I want to ask you guys about something totally different. Are you ready? Yeah. Here's the subject. The subject is co-working. Today for our co-working show, we have maybe our most prestigious guest ever. Our first guest to talk about co-working is Jessica Colasso. Jessica is a TED fellow. Jessica lives in Nairobi, and 
that's where I had to go to interview her. So if you read the daily papers in uh, Nairobi, then you have read a ton about the iHub and, uh, of course, Jessica Colasso. But the thing about the 508 audience is none of you guys read newspapers in Kenya. So uh, hopefully this will be new stuff to you. Hi, Jessica. How's it going? Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Very good. What is the, uh, what is the iHub about? Uh, okay, the iHub is a physical nexus point uh, for the Nairobi technology community. Okay. It's a place to come. Uh, meet and share ideas. Okay, and uh, it seems like it's going really well. Yes, uh, it's only been uh, in existence for 10 months and already we've had like 2,000 plus people registered on our site from the technology community. Okay. And it's all about the community, it's about bringing people together, sharing mm -hmm. ideas and getting more ideas out there that can help people in the community out there. So what is so what are, what is a place like the iHub? This is like a co-working space, right? Yes, it's a co-working space. Basically, uh, for the technology community, the iHub is an innovation space and pre-incubation space. It's a space to get the ideas, mm -hmm. uh, so people can come together, help them get the ideas from conceptual stage to an idea stage, okay. and actually like impl implement, prototype it, and actually get it working out there build businesses out of it and thereby building techpreneurs, uh, building innovators from a space like this. So the sim simple ideas become big things and it all starts within a space like this provided you work as a community. And so you've got people here who are bloggers and journalists and developers and entrepreneurs? Yes. The space is mainly for people in technology, but it's a mix of people. It's not only for people in software uh, development. It's a people who are working on web, mobile application development, mm -hmm. people who are working on businesses related to tech, researchers, bloggers, journalists as well. And they all just come together, people working on like social democracy uh, platforms and things like that. So okay. they come together in a space like this and they work together. And so this is better than like what people would do otherwise, which is probably work in their own little office or like work at the coffee shop or something. Yes. I don't actually. I don't. In the U.S., people would work at the coffee shop. I don't know yes. if that's a thing in Nairobi or not. Uh, well, in the technology community, before the iHub, were, uh, before the iHub, people used to work at what we call uh, coffee shops like Java mm -hmm. uh, and Dormans. They would have like small meetups in the morning. People would meet at eight thirty, have their meetings uh, up to the morning, and then disperse and then go right. and do their work probably in their offices or at home but what the iHub does it, it brings people in one space so you have your coffee shop you have your meeting space and you can hang around the whole day and meet other people who you can talk to about your work so you so, can be sort of working and networking yes, off and on as yeah, you so, uh, three important things of, that have come out of uh, the iHub is about sharing ideas working to that together and then the networking as aspect because you get to meet people who actually impact your, your projects impact your work mm. and then know about a little more about your work as well mm. yeah very cool well thanks welcome Today, we have on the show Holmes Wilson. Holmes is the co-founder of the Digital Rights Group Downhill Battle, co-founder of the Participatory Culture Foundation, probably co-founder of something else. Yeah? No? I don't know. Prestigious man also does the co-working thing. Tell me about co-working. Tell me about co-working in Worcester and what you do. Okay. Well, um, I spend a lot of time, you know, most of the work I do is, is on a computer, which is cool because you can do it anywhere. But um, I also have a, a partner um, who has a daughter, and she also works from home. And so a lot of us in one place after a while, it just like it, it's it's distracting. And I've sort of found like, um, you know, when you work from home, and your partner works from home, if you're spending all of your time working together, you're pretty much spending all your time practicing and ignoring each other. Okay. And that's like just a bummer on a personal level. Mm. And also, I think that um, there's a lot of productivity like a lot of like thoughts on productivity that say you should you should try to like signal to yourself when you're when you're in work mode and mm -hmm. and then be able to signal to yourself when you're not in work mode so like you know don't pull your laptop out and work in bed that's like the worst violation of this rule and then like the other rule would be don't work in your room set up another room in your house at least and if ideally you want to just have some place outside of your house and a this lot just, of people, this would just let me interrupt you. This would just help you with like focus or with like leaving the work behind. Yeah, it evening. helps you on both sides. It helps you focusing on not working and just like being like, I'm here. I don't have to worry about my email or my am, I am now. Mm -hmm. And it helps you in working where you're like, I'm at my office. I'm not going to read news articles. I am mm -hmm. um, just going to crank it out and, and mm -hmm. like 
be like super focused and, and just just do what I have to do today. Um, so, you know, that's this is what this is how the corporation works. It like <laughs> forces pulls, you pulls to people that. out of their houses and forces them to go to a place, which is just work, 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 and uh, and in it it works on people. And um, you know, I think if you, I don't really want to work that way, but if you, um, but you can use some of those those same tools for yourself. Um, in ways that are pretty positive. And the other thing is that a lot of people think you have to rent an office somewhere, have a bunch of money, um, and you don't. You just have to find some friends in the area who want to use whatever space they have or an apartment or some common space as, or a coffee shop even, as like their work environment. And then you have to, um, you just organize it and get a few people together. And so in my case, I walk like 10 minutes down the street and, um, and, uh, share the apartment of a friend who's a computer science grad student um, who sort you know so sort of works on is kind of in a similar field as me but mm-hmm. working on really different stuff mm-hmm. um, and uh, a couple other people have been involved at different points right now it's just the two of us but it might be more people and um, actually his partner's there she's out of town now but she works a lot there too but anyway um, it's five minutes or ten minutes walk from my house so I don't need a car to get there in the blizzard and or in the snow and uh, I've got a nice workspace there and I'm also not on my own all the time when I'm working which is cool do you, do you find there is there like any time of a serendipity or anything like that do you ever feel like your work is enhanced by having people who you can kind of waste time with or take a break with who are doing similar things yeah definitely I mean uh, th- there was like um, one of the projects I'm working on Universal Subtitles had a started to get a, a massive amount of traffic from some um, from a video about the Belgian political crisis that someone had used. Is there a used. Belgian political crisis? There is. They haven't formed a government as far as, unless something has changed very recently, they haven't formed a government in like 10 months or something like that. You, there's a Wikipedia article okay. about this. Okay. And um, and it's a it's actually a conflict between language-speaking blocks in mm-hmm. the country, the Flemish and, and French, mm-hmm. I believe. And uh, the... Um, and so the video was in Dutch or Flemish and subtitled into French and English. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was linked to from a Belgian daily and it was a rant. It was like a popular radio um, personality just going off, um, you know, to a camera like this about the situation. Okay. And uh, anyway, so the site went down. We needed, we were kind of freaking out and trying to, trying to solve it. And, uh, and I got some good suggestions about people to reach out to Mm. for, um, for like, uh, you know, in the moment, same day, scalability consulting, (laughs) kind of like from, from my coworker. And so there are, and then we hang out and talk about ideas too. But I, I also, you know, he, I think there's a bit of, sometimes I'm there and I'm like, it's got to be business, 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 you know, and then, like, he's a little bit more, he's a little bit more on the side of, like, talking about ideas than, than I am, mm-hmm. which, but I think, I think I, it's something I have to, like, kind of get a bit more low-key about, too, sometimes I'm a bit, like, too focused, too focused or compulsive. Maybe you guys need a break room, so you can be, like, if we're both <laughs> in the break room, we can talk, and if we're not in the break Bring room. Bring a water cooler in no, the coffee it, it's shop not. so you can capitulate around that. It's not a problem, <laughs> it hasn't been a problem, it's totally, it's, but, but just there is, there is a difference, but even, I mean, it kind of like, I would say that even when you're, we're co-working with people who are, who are trying to, who are looking for different things out of it, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of room to find common, there's a lot of room to find common utility in it, and uh, it's way better than working in your house. You know what I want? I want somebody to, to do this on a commercial level in Worcester, because I want to be able to use it as a business address. <laughs> And I want to have more than just myself and a couple of other people. I wouldn't mind having a situation where there were like 10 or 20 people. I want to say it was almost 10 years ago that there was a group that was doing that on Shrewsbury Street. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was very corporate. And they were charging more than I think, you know, the, the folks that... I think they were charging more than you would be willing to spend to... I'm not saying that you wouldn't be willing to spend, you know, an enormous amount of money. But I think they were looking to, to be a very profitable corporate enterprise instead mm-hmm. of just something that was making uh, utility available to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so they went really high end with, uh, you know, shared conference room spaces and you know, spaces oh, for yeah. presentations and what have you. It was more of like a, a shared business environment. Uh, and I, d- I don't think it's suc- it was successful because I don't think it's, <laughs> it's in existence anymore. 
but I think it's one of those things that you know it gets tried in a city like Worcester, and if it fails, but fails for the wrong reasons, doesn't fail because the idea is great, fails because the execution is poor, you, you don't end up seeing it come back uh, very quickly. Well, Stone Soup is an example on the nonprofit level I can think of where it wasn't exactly co-working in that it wasn't exactly everybody in just one big room, but Stone Soup was definitely like half a dozen nonprofits and a bunch of other random projects being run out of the same building. Mm -hmm. Everybody's saving money, everybody's sharing on utilities and whatever, and a ton of serendipity coming out of that, a ton of like running into all the other people who are doing progressive activism in Maine South in the same place. Um, Anyway, I I don't want to have to make this happen. This is why I'm making this appeal. This is an appeal to the people of Worcester, to the business people of Worcester. Just do this. I want to spend five, ten bucks a day I want to have a, 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 a maybe my own desk, maybe a spot at a, a larger table, kind of like a room at the library. Thousand square feet. Start me off at the thousand square feet. I talked to Bill Randall about this, and he was like, what kind of square footage do you need? And I was like, I don't really have any idea. Now I'm thinking it's a thousand square feet. So I'm going to see. I'm going to see you or a shared thousand square feet. A, a thousand square feet shared, because okay. I think that the I think that the uh, the the iHub has like a hundred members, and the iHub has I think the iHub has three thousand square feet of usable space. <clears throat> They actually measure measure real estate in square feet in Kenya. I think it might be the only thing done, still done in imperial imperial units in Kenya, except for like shillings. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd be curious to see somebody else do this. Like, I I, I get, shillings in Kenya. They, it's all it's done in shillings. A shilling is there's eighty oh, shillings to the dollar. Non metric money. <laughs> it's non metric money. Awesome. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> I, I wonder what other countries has that survived in. I don't know. Well, they they have shillings, but I don't know if they have pence, and I don't know if they have anything. They don't have pounds. All they have is shillings. So, like, you would pay somebody, like, 15,000 shillings. Or, like, so, you know, a house might cost a million shillings. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a cent. It's, like, a little bit larger than a cent. Well, what's the next unit? 80 shillings it's is what? One, one American dollar. Oh, it's pegged? No, it's just that's just oh, what it happens exchanger. to be this month. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's not like England and non-metric money. It's no, just no, like, no. It's just, like, just their, it does have... Unit. I just have their own unit there. You know, okay, we we actually had well, the, the the one concrete Facebook uh, suggestion we had this week was to talk about Egypt. We're not going to talk about Egypt because this is a show about Worcester, and there's plenty of commentary about Egypt out there. I just like we're talking about we are talking about Kenya and uh, Belgium and Brazil and wherever else you need to hear about this week. But you know what you're talking about your shared workspaces. I mean, that's the one thing that Worcester has an overabundance of is office space. That's like not necessarily the Class A office space, mm-hmm. but you know B and C rate that is incredibly inexpensive in the most uh, accessible areas of the city uh, in pretty much any size you could possibly imagine. So to put together a small group of people to share that kind of resource, it's not uh, impossible to conceive it coming together. Somebody should just do this. Don't make, need don't make me do people. this. Yeah. Just need to find 10 friends, man. I don't, wanna, friends. I don't want to have to order. Come over to our one. You I know mean, what? I think that the, the other thing <laughs> is that, though, that office space is like, office space is downtown, which isn't actually, I mean, I'm, this is sort of, heresy here but maybe but it's not that convenient to get to like you're better off with a place that's kind of like you have a few people in your neighborhood and you find a place where you're all in the same neighborhood that's just because we're west siders and we didn't cross park avenue until we were in our teens uh, no it's Come because on, it's because if you if you go downtown with a with a i mean you know okay like there's some getting to this old stone soup location in a car at two in the afternoon yeah. was, was a freaking nightmare yeah yep. um and and there's a bunch of places where you can you know move around with a, with a car or a bicycle yeah. like pretty easily so yeah so it's like okay anyway the um what i was going to say though is that is that another awesome option for this is to just get a residential location <laughs> um you yeah a bunch of beautiful triple deckers that are like a thousand a month and yep. if you get five people in on that then that comes in your that's in your that's my two hundred dollars a month yeah that's your in your in your five to ten a day range and you have a shower you have a kitchen you can make lunch like a lot of offices have sort of have that but it's not really as comfortable a house and is nice a house is nice and houses have big windows a ton of sunlight I mean, that's the other thing most offices do not have great sunlight because right. you, you you know you don't have there's one wall that you don't have at least um i want to cut you guys off from time for due to time and just say i could do this but i have too many other things going on there's people out there who are making money doing real estate Seriously, man, take your thousand square foot place and just make this happen and save me some time, and I'll be your first customer. Mike Benedetti serious while he's wearing that helmet. (sighs) You need to take me very seriously, people. This is all I'm going to say right here. You going to talk about real estate? This is all I'm trying to say. What's going on this weekend that's exciting in Worcester? I got right here. I have it's kind of snow damaged. The uh, this month's DIY calendar. If you need, 
if you need to see this, you know where to find this. Anything else exciting going on? We got a few seconds left. More snow on Saturday, right? More snow on Saturday. Holmes Olson. Snow days. Snow days. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for watching the show. Thanks to Brendan Melican and Holmes Olson for being on the program and sitting <laughs> sitting inside of a, we could get crushed a, at any a lightly reinforced snow cave. <laughs> Hank stole Seriously, man. You got to raise your game, my brother. Step up the game. I'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye.